Walker. Where are you now? Hey, you. Hey, you too. So where are you? <clears throat> I just dropped somebody off at St. Joe's with an exploding appendix. I'll come back along Queen. Oh, were you hurt? Nah. Are you nervous? Who, me? Yeah. You don't have to go, you know. Are you kidding? If I don't go, I'm dead. Of course. If I do go, I'm dead. Don't be stupid. My father's not a violent man. I've never seen him hit anyone. He put his fist through the kitchen door one time. Oh, yeah? He's gotten over it. That I'm pregnant, I mean. So, don't worry. Oh, yeah? Now, I know exactly how it'll go. You'll walk into Milo's. He'll be sitting at the table at the back like he always does. You'll have to have at least three glasses of ouzo before he'll say anything other than drink. And you can't anyway because you're driving and tell him I said so. And then it'll be a big Greek macho thing and the two of you will decide when we're going to go see the priest, when we're going to get married. And forget it, because I've told him already. I'm not, like a hundred times already. So don't even bother going. Krista, of course I'm going. It's your father. I have to go. Well, go then. Just don't talk to him. Krista's starting to show. I mean, her tummy, just this little curve. Funny how important every day seems now. January 23rd. Oh, jeez, I love her tummy. We're both kind of insane right now, I think. Every day we're closer to something so magical, so real, so big, it'll change our lives completely. But we don't do anything about it, like plan. It's like we're in a trance, too scared to move, and entranced, too charmed. Everything's going to change. Something brand new is going to be brought into the world. Jeez. Krista's mother died. So everything. It's all sort of weird. Two weeks ago, last Thursday, she'd been at Princess Margaret Hospital for about half a year, just getting smaller and smaller. So Krista needs some time, I guess, to get everything straight. Georgie Papadopoulos, on the other hand, has plans. We've never really talked. Whenever I'm around, he just kind of stares. And then, four days ago now... He called and asked me to meet him at Milo's restaurant on Danforth Avenue. Before I went, I figured I should talk to Mr. Piatelli, the man who owns the cab company, and get some advice. Advice? Yeah, let me see. Duck. Thanks. Well, what do you expect? You got my dispatcher pregnant. And hmm. hey, what's the matter with you anyway? Uh, Were you born yesterday? I don't what? want to talk about it. You should have a caution light on top of your head. You're accident prone. You're a walking disaster. Forget it. I'll, I'll just... I'll, I'll go and I'll think of something to say, okay? Hey, come on. I'm teasing you. You want to know how to talk to Georgie. Huh? Sit down. Well, all right. You're all nervous or something. First thing, do you have any idea how much this guy loves Krista? A lot. Yeah, well, Muttonhead, what do you think? See, you had like a million operations before she was four years old. He used to carry her everywhere. She had these braces on her leg. They weighed more than she did. And every time you saw Georgie Papadopoulos, you saw Krista in his arms. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, well, it does something funny to your head. Sitting beside umpteen hospital beds and watching your little kid in pain. It must, eh? And fighting all the way too, like a a little tiger. Tiger in a wheelchair, right? So what is she anyway? Uh, what, 25? 26. That doesn't matter. Georgie can't stand to see her hurt again, in pain, from anything, by anybody, for any reason. Got it? Yeah. Well, Krista gets mad because he's overprotective. That's so what? What does she know about it? Second thing. I've known Georgie Papadopoulos since when he first showed up from the old country. He's wearing his short pants, running errands for his uncle's grocery store. They had a corner in the Dundas in Parliament. I taught him how to be Canadian, eh? And I'll tell you something. When Georgie Papadopoulos is your friend, he's there like a rock. A rock all your life. You treat Krista right, you got the best friend you could have right there in Georgie. So relax, all right? All right, yeah. You guys will find a way to talk to each other because you both love Krista. It'll work out. Right. 
course, if anything goes wrong, you're dead meat. So I was on my way to Milo's restaurant to meet Georgie Papadopoulos when a woman holding a child waded through a snowbank and waved me down. I figured I had enough time for a short run and I had my light on, so I stopped. Okay, where to? No answer. I looked in my mirror. All I could see was the little kid. I turned around. That's all there was. The little kid. Hi. Hi. Uh, where'd your mom, um, that lady, where'd she go? I don't know. Oh, jeez. She had a long woolen scarf wrapped around her head and her neck and a tweed coat on that looked a couple of sizes too big and about 20 years out of date. All I could see of her face were pale cheeks and a nose and huge, dark eyes. A little hand reached out and gave me a piece of paper. Thanks. 4021 Bathurst Street? That's like just south of Moosonee, you know. No, I guess you wouldn't know. What's your name? Sandra Elizabeth Jenkins. Hey, that's a great name. My name's Walker Gerard Devereaux. How old are you? Seven. I'm 20. So, was that your mom? Yes. Look, I think I'm going to turn around and try to find her. I can't go all the way up there. So we circled a few blocks around Jameson and Queen, but no sign of the woman, and when I asked Sandra where she lived, she just went still and looked away, so there was nothing else for me to do. I went up Ossington and Oakwood to Eglinton and cut over to the Allen Expressway and went north like a rocket, thinking all the way about Georgie Papadopoulos, common law, father-in-law, ten sharp. Walker, where are you now? Going north on the Allen Expressway. What? I have a passenger. What? This little kid. Somebody just stuck her in my cab all alone. But I've got an address, so I couldn't just abandon her, you know? It's freezing out. No. Right. So, uh, I'll just call the restaurant and tell Dad you're not coming. No. No, I can make it. I'll just be a little late. Are you sure? Yeah. That's my girlfriend, Krista. She's kind of weird. Do you have a boyfriend? No? Well, you're lucky. It can get pretty weird. 4021 Bathurst turned out to be a two-story house sitting on a bit of a rise with a string of multicolored Christmas lights still up and flashing on and off. It was only five to ten, but they were the only lights to be seen. Every window in the place was dark. I eased the cab through a hole carved out of the frozen snowbank and rolled up the drive. Come on, come on, give me a break. Ah, crap. Guess what, Sandra? No one's home. Now, do you, do you know the people who live here? Are they like your uncle? Aunt, relatives, friends? Don't you know them? No. Have you ever been here before? No? No. Uh. Oh, come on now. Don't be scared. I'm not going to leave you here or anything. Are you kidding? I'll uh, take you back. We'll find your mom. We'll just wait a few more minutes, that's all. Maybe I'll check with the neighbor. You want some potato chips? Ketchup, they're the best. See? Want some? Okay. Okay. Mmm. Great. They're the best, huh? So we sat there munching chips for a little while, me watching the car clock go by ten o'clock and hoping Krista wouldn't call, and Sandra sitting in the shadows of the back seat, looking at me with her frightened, luminous eyes. Then a car pulled up behind us in a blaze of light. 
Hey, what's up? Hi, uh, I got a passenger here, a little girl. What? Yeah, uh, this is 4021 Bathurst, right? Oh, jeez, I hope you know her. A kid? Yeah. Bring her in, it's freezing. I pulled Sandra's scarf back as gently as I could, loosened it around her collar so they could see her. She had a string tied round her throat, probably for a house key. The lower lip was beginning to quiver. This was really starting to bother me. All I could think of was my little sister's back in Big River, and I wanted to get angry with somebody real bad. Her name's Sandra. Sandra Elizabeth Jenkins, right? Nope. Don't know her. I went back once and couldn't find her mother's or where they stay, and she had $20, so somebody thought they were sending her to the right place. Jenkins, wait a minute. Uh, is that what she said? Yeah. Your mommy, uh, she wouldn't be Moira Jenkins, would she? Is, is that her name? Is it? Is that it? Yeah, she says yeah. Ha! Huh. What, do you know her? Nah, uh, the wife knows her. Works in the same place down in Spadina. Sewing machine operators, you know. Uh -huh. This Moira, she's a little, uh, you know, strange-like. Everything's a big secret with her, so the wife says. So nobody pays any attention to her anymore. Except my wife, the saint. She feels sorry for her. You know, sometimes she calls you about nothing. Could be in the middle of the night, goes on and on. My wife talks to her. Where's your wife now? Over at her mother's. Where's that? Scranton, Pennsylvania. The old lady's not feeling so well, so the wife drove down there tonight with her brother. Mm. Look, uh, I'd help you out if I could, but these days, there's no way I'm going to risk looking after somebody else's little kid, if you know what I mean. Right. Krista? Come in. Yo, Krista. Yo, Walker. Hi. Hello. I'm heading back downtown now. I'm on the Allen. It's 10.30. Yeah, I know. So are you going over to the restaurant? Um, well, no. You see... The little kid, she's still with me. No one there knew who she was. Well, they, they knew who she was, but like, well, it, it just didn't work out. So anyway, I'll have to try to find her mother again. And if I can't, the cops or children's aid or something. Are you still there? Hello? Hello? So look, I'm sorry. You'll just have to call your dad and say I can't make it tonight. I tried, you know. And it really bumps me out because your dad and I... Walker, I've already called him. You did? Yes. Oh. Well, <laughs> thanks. You're welcome. So he said he'd come down here and get my key to your place and wait for you up in your apartment. He's lost it. He's gone completely crazy. My apartment? <laughs> Please, Sandra, show me where you live. It has to be around here somewhere. Do you recognize anything? Sandra? Can't you tell me? No. Why not? I'm not supposed to. Ah. Uh, okay. That's all right. Don't worry about it. You know something, Sandra? This is getting to be like a really weird night. Oh, Hey, hey, Inspector Kiss, it's me, Walker. Well, so it is. So we got a contract out on me, kid, or are you just blind? <laughs> You're the one who's in the wrong. In the wrong? Wrong has nothing to do with it. I'm a cop. I'll bust you. Oh, okay. So what are you doing here, anyway, in the middle of the street, jaywalking? I'm working. Over there. Over there turned out to be a run-down apartment building set back from the street. I pulled the cab up, got out, and talked to a cop. Uh, excuse me, got a sec? And hey, what's up? He said he'd wander over to the cab to have a chat with Sandra. I caught up to Inspector Kiss, who was talking to another cop, then followed him under the yellow police tape. It's okay, he's with me. Fine. Hey, what are you hey move on, doing? you guys. I'm just curious. Oh, you're going to solve this case even before I get my notepad out, are you? No. Well, you have amazed me before. Let's 
see if you can amaze me again, shall we? And don't step in the blood. Okay. Male Caucasian, about 30 years of age. Found in the lobby, right there under the mailboxes. Stabbed to death. Looks like several stab wounds. Looks like a knife. We'll find out when the boys at the morgue have a look. He's on his way down there now. Jeez. Lots of blood. Yeah, he was a bleeder. It's funny, you can never tell. Some people, uh, I've seen them slip wide open end to end. Hardly any blood at all. Jeez. Well, that's what makes my job so fascinating. Little details like that. Yeah. You know, stab in the front or back? In the front. Real fast. Whack, whack, whack. Terrific, eh? We get one of these about twice a week. Usually the guy survives. Drugs, women, uh, just for the hell of it. Whack, whack, whack. Someone saw some guy running away down the street. It's routine. Only one thing makes this a little different. Hmm. You see? Oh, it looks like he was trying to write something. Yeah, in his own blood. Hmm. Uh, it's hard to make out. Looks like a... Uh, Zed, Zed. What the hell does that mean? Zed, Zed. It could be some kind of organization, you know, like a like an acronym. Uh, you know anything like that? Like KKK? No, like Zed, Zed. No. Why am I wasting my time talking to you? I don't know. With that, Inspector Kiss straightened up all five foot six of them and started talking to the cop at the front door. Zed, Zed. Wavering, shaky red lines across the dirty, cream-colored floor. I straightened up, too, and looked at the list of names by the apartment numbers. There were only a few. Either or almost everyone wanted to remain anonymous or they'd been ripped out. Nobody by the name of Jenkins, little Sandra's last name, listed anywhere. Zed, Zed. Or maybe two, two. That made more sense. If the guy was trying to communicate who had attacked him, two, two, apartment 22. Except there was no 22, but there were apartments 2, 21, 22, and 23. I took a closer look at the writing on the floor. You could see where the finger trailed off the end of the second two, tried to form something else. Then four fingernail marks scraped across the floor as if frozen in time, in blood, the exact moment he died. I turned to Inspector Kiss, but he had disappeared somewhere out by the barricade. So I went through the open inside door and up the stairs. Yeah? Oh, hi. Um, does um, uh, Joe live here? Joe? You got the wrong place. Wait! Um, I, I tried number 221, but there was no answer. There's no Joe, all right? Nobody here is Joe. Not at this end, anyway. 223 is Delilah. At least I think she's Delilah this week. She hooks. <laughs> Maybe you're looking for Delilah. No. Well, that's good, because she's in jail. And the next door here is Mrs. Jenkins and her kid. What? Mrs. Jenkins? And Sandra? Yeah. Hi. Oh, hi there. Sandra and I decided to sit in the patrol car where we can keep warm and have ourselves a little chat. Great. Hi, Sandra. She doesn't uh, talk much, does she? No address. Uh, she's being street-proofed in a really strange way. Uh, where's Inspector Kiss? Oh, he's gone back to headquarters. Oh. Look, I think Sandra lives here. Apartment 221. Uh, you can check it out by the keys around her neck, but... I also think there's some connection between that apartment and our friend in the lobby. Come again? Well, Delilah's in jail, and the woman in 222 uses a walker. Come again? Okay, Sandra, I gotta go now. It was really neat driving around with you. Bye. Bye, walker. Bye, Sandra. Hey, wait a minute. You're not going anywhere. I'll talk to Inspector Kiss. Take care of her. Hey, you... I raced back up the expressway, then I parked at the side of Bathurst Street, just up from number 4021. I checked with Mike across the street. Mrs. Jenkins hadn't shown up yet looking for her kid. She hadn't called, so I said thanks, walked back to the cab, and waited. Mike looked like he thought I was nuts coming back to check, but then I didn't tell him anything about the dead guy in the lobby. And I only had time to roll one cig and smoke half of it. 
when a cab pulled up in front of number 4021 and a woman got out. Though I hadn't seen her too clearly, I was sure it was the same woman who had waded through the snowbank with Sandra and flagged me down two hours ago. Miss Jenkins! Wait up! She stopped in the middle of the driveway as I jogged across the road towards her. She just stood there, watching me, her round white face surprised. Mrs. Jenkins! Uh, Sandra isn't there. What? What, what do you mean? I'm the guy, you know, you, you put her in my cab. And, and when we got here, these people didn't know who she was. I had to take her back. But this is Mrs. Dinelli's. Yeah, but M- Mrs. Dinelli's not here. She's gone away to... Where's Sandra? Uh, what, what have you done? She's okay. She's with the police. With the... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Mrs. Jenkins, what... No. But what's the matter? Don't you want her with the police? I, I can see you wanting to keep her away from that guy down in the lobby. But why from the police? No. That did it. She looked at me like totally panic-stricken. Then she started to run. She ran, ran across the neighbor's front lawn, then across their driveway and across the next lawn, past some startled snowmen and on and on. And I jogged along the side of the road beside her like we were out for a run together. And she started to slow down. And she looked like she was running nowhere. Nowhere to go. Just running, blindly running through the snow. Waiting. And then... She fell down to her knees. Mrs. Jenkins. Mrs. Jenkins. Whatever happened, I'm sorry. Let me take you to Sandra. But she's gone. It's over. It's over now. My baby. I helped her walk back through the snow and helped her into the front seat of the cab. I could feel her arm under her thin coat, but there was no resistance, no weight. It was as if whatever fire, will, life had been inside her had left. We drove back downtown and it was scary because I knew I could be sitting beside a murderess with a bloodstained knife under her coat. What will happen? I don't matter. She's a great kid. She's real special. Well, school. What to do about school? She's great, Sandra. Miss Jenkins? That man? In the lobby? Barker. Wanted to cut off a finger. Maybe just a little piece of her ear. As proof. She was a baby. A baby. I didn't think I'd ever see him again. Didn't know how he found me. But he would do it again. He would want to do it. So I had to. First. Slick as a whistle. It was done. Because of Sandra. 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 Kidnapped? Yeah. There was a motel receipt on the dead guy. Inspector Kiss went out to check the room. Another man was there, packing in a hurry, his accomplice. It turns out, anyway, Inspector Kiss nabs him, and he sings right away because he's afraid he's going to be charged with murder. Sandra was kidnapped when she was six months old by guess who? You're Mrs. Jenkins. Right. Six years ago, she was working as a nanny in some ritzy Vancouver neighborhood, got fixated on a neighbor's little baby girl, and talked her boyfriend, Barker, into helping her plan the kidnapping with the idea, as far as he knew, of exchanging the kid for a ransom. But he got talking about, well... Mailing a little bit of the kid to her parents as proof. Oh, my God. So, she took off with the baby and left him high and dry. And she's been on the run ever since, moving from city to city, picking up whatever job she could as long as no questions were asked, keeping Sandra hidden most of the time. An impossible, weird life. But she never hurt Sandra. She loved her. 
As far as Sandra was concerned, she was and is her real mother. Hmm. Until now. Yeah. Well, what about the guy then? In the lobby? The old boyfriend. Hmm. He picks up with this other guy. The other guy hears the story about the kidnapping gone wrong six years ago and gets the brainwave that if they could only find the kid, they could still pull it off. Mrs. Jenkins, whatever her real name is, was always writing to Glasgow to a foster mother. She was a foundling or something. Anyway, the boyfriend had the address. They called her up, and sure enough, they kept up a correspondence all these years. And innocently, the foster mother gives the two guys Mrs. Jenkins' latest address. They stake out the apartment. The only problem is, Mrs. Jenkins spots him too. Barker, standing across the road watching the place. So she kills him. Hmm. She's afraid for Sandra that he'll do what he threatened first time, so... She sneaks her out the back, puts her in my cab, then walks right past him back into the apartment building. She hopes he makes a run for her before she gets through the inside door of the lobby, and he does. And she's ready. But she didn't know there was another guy. And that's what she said. She said that to Inspector Kiss before he'd even asked her anything. Like, she's relieved it's over. And for Sandra's sake. Because she has to go to school sometimes. She has to have some kind of life. Yeah. That family in Vancouver, it'll be like... Like some kind of miracle to have their child back. Won't it? It's gonna be hard, though. Really hard for Sandra. They're all miracles, kids. Lost ones, ones with moms and dads. Right? Right. Walker. I love you. I love you. I know. Guess what? It's time for you to go home and talk to my father. Mm -hmm.